great. Thanks so much. Uh, so now we have a demo on uh, Archie. Um, <clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, if you want the QR code to the slides, the link, um, you can just scan the QR code. Um, I'm Julius Heitcutter. Um, today, I'll be presenting on Archie, which is an open source end-to-end -end AI framework for research and education. Um, and don't worry, the QR code's on the next slide. Um, so um, when we think about the intelligence that's needed in research and education, we think about uh, having highly specialized knowledge. We think about having answers that are based on facts um, instead of opinions or just mere conjecture. We think about the ability to interact with other systems, whether or not that's tools in your lab, code, or searching things on the internet. And we think about collaboration with others. We think about using other humans in order to augment our answers and, pro and provide curated final results. However, out of the box large language models like what we see with ChatGPT or you know, Google's Gemini coming out soon is that they don't do this. Um, they lack knowledge in very highly specialized domains. Um, they still fall victim to hallucinations, so their answers aren't purely based on facts. And usually the interface that you have is just a chatbot, and um, there is no way to kind of work with a human in real time to, to, to talk to these things besides just a back and forth on a chat interface. And so, well, how do we make a potential solution? You know, academia could create a custom large language model and a custom large language model framework, but as we've talked about yesterday, some it's generally infeasible. It costs a lot of money. And really, only the big tech giants are able to do this. Um, there's, of course, fine tuning. However, for many applications, fine tuning requires a large amount of labeled training data, um, which is, in many STEM uh, applications, really hard to generate and altogether just expensive. So fine tuning seems to not be the solution here. And so we turn to retrieval augmented generation, also known as BRAG. And yesterday, we had a lot of presentations about this as well. And so I'll just kind of quickly gloss over what it is. It's basically feeding large language models the information they need to succeed. And so um, basically, what we do here is uh, we have some input files that we uh, feed into our uh, database. And then we query uh, relevant context to the question and then feed that together into a prompt to feed it to the large language model that produces an output. right? And, and so this is a, a kind of brief overview of RAG. Um, uh, there's been lots of research on this and lots of papers about this, especially in the last six months with kind of people uh, doing it a lot. Um, you see RAG consistently outperforms fine tuning or other ways that we've been able to manage to augment um, these large language models. And um, they generate very specific and diverse information. Um, so this all seems very promising. There's tons of existing tools for ragging. Um, and uh, they kind of fall into two categories. On the left here, you see kind of, uh, these are like coding tools. So if you want to code up your own RAG system, these are really fun tools to check out. However, they lack an end-to-end -end idea, right? You can't just use them to suddenly have an end-to-end -end, um, uh, system. And so uh, we actually use LangChain and, 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 and Hugging Face to build our systems. Um, but you can't just immediately use them. And then most end-to-end -end stuff, there's like a million startups out there that have specific end-to-end -end ragging applications. I even found one that says Julius um, AI. And, um, but the problem is that these are closed, they're behind a paywall, and they're often very specific to whatever niche the startup found that it decided to rag on. And these niches aren't always applicable to academia. And so this kind of motivated us to build Archie, which is an AI augmented research chat intelligence. Um, more specifically, we built an open, blank, end-to-end -end tool for ragging. And so this, we kind of have three pillars here um, that we decided to build our tool on. We built it um, to be compatible with many different large language models and flexible to many different applications. We built it to be easy to use and for admins to install. Um, we built it to have many, many interfaces with an emphasis on that those interfaces are working together with humans instead of just giving them answers. And uh, yeah, we're a fully open source project, so you can see our codes here. And um, so in this sense, we're completely transparent. Um, and you can actually host it yourself. So if you want it to be completely contained, uh, all you need is an access to a large language model, via that, if that's via an API to OpenAI, or a specific hardware where you're hosting um, open source models. And, um, and then um, you need a server to host the website. This is a pretty easy web server. And we host lots of these on MIT servers, and we're always happy to host for you. And so kind of going through these three pillars and, and, and what we do about them, um, 
like I, like I mentioned, we're compatible with many different um, uh, large language models. Um, of course, the big ones like OpenAI and Gemini that are kind of managed by Google and behind a paywall. Um, however, also open source models. So if you want fully to be contained in the system and fully open source, you can plug in Meta's Llama 2 or any other model that you find on Hugging Face. We're also very flexible to many use cases. Um, our biggest, uh, our first use case was to submit, which is uh, kind of a high performance uh, computing cluster of the physics department here at MIT. And uh, what we did there is we managed their help desk. They get like a few questions every day. And so we kind of draft answers for them and then, and then, and then work with their help desk on that. We also gave a chat bot for novices who are new to high performance computing um, and, and, and people to kind of figure out how to manage this tool and, and work with it. Um, we also reached out to two classes here at MIT, the Physics 801, which is the really big class, one of the biggest ones here at MIT. And we uh, offered a chat bot kind of a, a tutor assistant. We uploaded all the, the syllabus, the P sets, the textbooks, everything. And, and, and so it helped the students there. And then lastly and newly, we're working together with CERN on uh, their data analysis framework named Root, which is a really um, specific kind of almost coding language for CERN to be able to work for its data. And there's huge amounts of documentation. They get tons and tons of questions. So we're working on them and sifting through the documentation and kind of helping them with their help desk as well. Um, move, moving on, uh, we're really easy for admins to use and install. We have a very simple pip install script that you can run. Um, we have built-in monitoring, so here you see kind of some messages over time and tons of other graphs that's e easily accessible through Grafana. And we have an admin portal, which is kind of a UI. We're able to easily manage the documents that you apply to this, and uh, you're able to edit the users if you choose to have it behind a login. And then lastly, we have many interfaces. So kind of our main interfaces on the left here, we have a chat bot. Um, that you can put behind a login system. And, 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 and so that's really exciting. We also have this augmented help desk that I mentioned earlier. The idea here is that you have an email that gets sent into the help desk. Archie drafts a kind of initial response that then gets curated with a conversation by humans, and then finally is curated to a final answer and outputted as an email from the help desk. And then we also have uh, Piazza and Discourse. Um, Piazza is a forum, uh, Discourse is also a forum that's widely used in classes, and so we have an interface that's working with that. And so we combine all these things into one cohesive and configurable system. Um, you see kind of we have the Archie core in the middle, and on the left you can plug in whatever interfaces you'd want. We're also constantly building more and working with new use cases to build more interfaces and excited about that. Um, and so of course everyone wants to see the demos and what it can do. Um, so uh, we, here's a demo on root, this is kind of the, the data analysis framework. And we ask it how to do a maximum likelihood fit. And now if you ask ChatGPT this, it gives you some vague answers. It's generally unable to kind of code it. But instead, it gave us a full walkthrough. And it actually referenced the documentation. You can see there's a reference to the example there. And then it, it, it referenced real functions and real variables in root. And then, of course, when we ask it to output the code, it outputs fully correct and, 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 and relevant code. Um, so, so this is really exciting. Um, even, even more exciting is you ask a question that it turns out there's a very related um, forum post to, it will actually link the forum post in the bottom of the answer and be like, hey, here's this forum post if you want to read more. And then, of course, bases its answer based on the forum post. So in this sense, you know, we're able to do this. Um, then we also have lots of fun little answers, like uh, to uh, our tu physics tutor, many people ask, like, should I do my laundry today? You know, the answer is like, I'm not sure. It might help your productivity. You should probably focus on physics, or at least with me, focus on physics. And, and so comparing us to out-of-the-box general applications, um, we are able to, through document injection, access lots of specialized knowledge through these documents. Um, we're able to uh, produce base answers that are based on facts and sources. Um, we have many interfaces that you can talk to um, in order to interact with systems and whatnot. And uh, we are able to like, build interfaces that work together with humans to generate curated answers instead of just spitting out the answers of a large language model. Um, we're constantly developing, so we have many, many more exciting developments coming soon. Uh, but just to wrap up, it, it seems that out of the box, large language models do not meet the needs, do not meet the needs for research and education. And often, the companies that own them, their values might not align with the values of academia. And so we present Archie, a blank open source end-to-end -end framework for retrieval augmented generation, um, and uh, we we. We're an open source project, so if you want to download our repo, you can just download our repo, spin up your own instance uh, completely for you, and you know this is all very exciting, but of course we love collaboration, so if you'd like to work with us 
or um, if you have a use case for each, which you think that Archie might work well with, uh, we encourage you to reach out to us at archie at mit.edu. We're always excited uh, to, to build on use cases and, and to work more. And, and we have three demos here, the submit use case demo, the root use case demo, and the 801, that's the classical mechanics course uh, use demo, if, if you would uh, like to play with those. Anyways, thank you. So Kevin just stepped out to make sure that all of the coffee is here, um, which is a top priority, I'm sure, for everyone. Um, but we have about five minutes to, uh, for questions for Julius. So if you have a question, please come up and we can ask questions. Hi, hello. Uh, this is a super interesting talk. Um, I am super excited to already start trying to use this myself. But my big question is, especially like you said, when you use it for something like a help desk, because in the back end, you're still using something like OpenAI or Gemini. Are you then not sending all of that potentially private or secure, like internal information to those servers as well? Or do you also have some sort of privacy protection in there? Because for example, if I want to use it for a chatbot for IT help, at some point I might start sharing, I don't know, hopefully not passwords, but you know, sensitive information. So how does that work with these reg um, implementations? Right, so it is definitely true that anything that you give to OpenAI is you know, not confidential anymore. And so we offer basically that you can plug in to open source models that basically you host yourself. So if confidentiality or privacy is an issue, then you can host like Llama 2 is um, Meta's um, kind of a large language model that they've made the weights fully open source and public. Um, we have kind of an interface for that to interact with us. So all you have to do is download the weights on your computer, um, and then you can fully, with an A100 or two, you can fully host their biggest model, and then that way there's no information ever leaving the server. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited about that and you know, are incorporating that in our application. Thank you. Um, hello, yeah, first amazing talk and thank you so much for building this. I kept, we, I've had issues with trying to rag and every single time you answered the question and moved through it, so that's amazing. It has a lot of focus on large language models, so I'm curious if you're hoping to move into multimodality or eventually integrating APIs with more camera vision or increasingly, I know Gemini has lots of different multimodal applications and I'm curious if you're preparing the RAG in any way for things outside of large language model applications. Yeah, it's been really exciting what the kind of, what they've been doing with multimodal large language models and all that. Mm -hmm. um, we um, basically work with use cases to kind of build systems mm -hmm. for them. And so currently we have not really had a use case that's really demanded us to work with this multimodal thing. Mm -hmm. But I think this would definitely be uh, an exciting new direction that at some point we would definitely be willing to try out and, and work with. Okay, amazing, thank you so much. Um, so this is this was great. Um, some uh, some work on rags suggests that there are some kind of subtle details about how exactly you implement this. So for instance, in in going through doing your vector database, the size of the chunks that you choose, and that some of those can have a huge impact on performance. And I imagine you're just kind of going with some hyper parameters that work for you. But you know, to what extent could an end user like play around with some of those? I guess it's open source, so you can you can do that yourself, but um, you know, what's been your experience about sort of how brittle is this system or how you know, flexible and adaptive it is in, in these real world, uh, world use cases? Yeah, uh, that, that's a great question. So um, in terms of these hyperparameters in general, we basically look out at the papers and what's been generally done with RAG, this work here, and then we kind of implement those hyperparameters. Um, specifically with chunk sizes, um, you are right, it is dependent on uh, basically how dense, your date, how dense your text is. So if your text is full of fluff, you can have a bigger chunk size because that way there's less semantic meaning per character, so you can you know, throw more of it into the vector database and it's all still fully represented. Um, however, for more dense data, you might need smaller chunk sizes. And so um, we kind of have, uh, it, in, in our kind of uh, CLI, uh, deployment, we have configuration files that you can hook up with this. So we have this like long configuration file, it's maybe like 150 lines long, and you can see all the different hyperparameters and you can edit and tune each one. Um, and you know, if you know, 
you can do this by playing around, you can do it by reading on it, and then we also have a good amount of experience with kind of like what tuning these hyperparameters means and, and how that best um, like creates a better RAG framework.